light right today. I hope, hope I can get the lighting right. In this. Okay, I'm recording. Let me see if I can get this together. Let's see if I can get this together. Is this together. Lighting. All right. Uh, at the risk of making this sound really robotic because I wrote it down, um, this is a video on Futurama. Uh, since season, I'm in season six. Let me slow down. I'm in season six. Um, talking about episode nine and episode ten today. Uh, they're both titled Bender's Game, but part one and part two. <laughs> uh, I think I spoke on this earlier, but uh, apparently all the episodes in this whole season are parts of one another if that makes sense meaning uh there's gonna be three parts here and four parts here but they're gonna be like short movie structure that makes sense um so interesting uh episode nine uh starts off as like a tribute to uh the beatles now i'm not 100 percent because i wasn't alive during <clears throat> the release of this album but uh i'm assuming no i'm not assuming i'm i'm pretty sure that the name of the album was either Yellow Submarine or there was a Yellow Submarine on the album cover. Or probably both. But the beginning of this Futurama episode, the ship gets turned into a Yellow Submarine and they go through this whole whole sequence, which is pretty cool. I liked it. Um, now, for some reason, it's it's titled Bender's Game, but I feel like his story, Bender's story, is a sub-story, and the main story is society, actual society, not just inside this uh, fictional fictional show, but like the society that I live in. It's a critique on our dependence on fossil fuels. I think that's the main story. So they, they're writing a pretty, really, really, actually... I, I don't want to, I can't down it, because it's actually a really entertaining story, um, of course, I wrote down a joke, but I just feel like I'm going to butcher it, but I'm still going to try it anyway, so, um, part of Bender's, <laughs> part of Bender's story, in this one is, uh, he's going crazy due to excessive, uh, playing time on Dungeons and Dragons, they really rag on people who play Dungeons and Dragons too, which I, I'm not, uh, I'm not too sure why. I mean, it's not that big a deal. I, I guess, I guess for decades, uh, playing that game has been associated with, you know, pretty much being a loser. Like, you know, what what society can generally thinks is a loser. You know, you you don't go out. You you know, you know, you're not in shape. You're not uh, you're not the cool kid. Whatever. You don't really have a, a significant other. Whatever the case is, I guess a lot of that is associated with playing that game. But it's just a game, in my opinion. I've never played it, but you know, I feel like it's just a game. Anyway, um, let's see here. So, uh, at, at this point in the episode, Bender is uh, all the way gone, and he jumps out the window. Mind you, it's, it's a robot in a fictional show, so it's not that big a deal. Pulls out a sword. Ah. Now, I, for the life of me, I can't remember what he says to the... Um, to the to the working bot i'm just gonna leave it like that I, hopefully you can understand what that means it's a bot that <laughs> it, it's a robot that uh gets paid to deliver pleasure to other robots or or humans i guess i guess or aliens i don't know whatever it, it's that type of bot um he pulls out a sword he says he says uh what does he say he says he says unguard Unguards you like he's like he called it like a she bot or 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 something something like that. Uh but he's like he has a sword, he's like prepare to cross swords and of course the bot's response is not of course, but the bot's response is you can't afford it. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. Uh that's a transgender robot and he pulls out the sword and tells him prepare to cross swords and he's like you can't afford it. Which I thought was funny. Um, end of the episode um, puts Bender inside the insane asylum but um, I'm trying to remember the major points of oh I guess there is there's another sub story in here as well uh, Lila has a shock collar to try and control her anger and we're seeing a lot of Zoidberg in this episode too which is it just 
makes me it makes my opinion of him sour but uh, his use in all the other episodes I liked up until this episode it paints him in a bad light from my, in my opinion I don't know uh let's see so part 10 I probably should roll a little bit more down huh I think I think you get the idea of it they're trying to stop uh moms from from mom's robots she's controlling all the fossil fuel which is in in this <clears throat> in this um in this world it's it's uh dark matter and dark matter comes from the center of the earth which is basically oil and <sighs> yeah a little too obvious i feel like uh episode 10 is part two in front of yeah uh, i already spoke on that making fun of dungeon and dragons uh oh yeah let's talk about that too jeez i didn't write down nothing oh the, the funny there's a funny note in uh episode 10 so by this part in the, in the episode um bender's still going through his shenanigans inside the saint asylum um the crew has crew as hell been on stopping uh uh mom from that's the that's the character's name. The hell been on stopping her from uh, uh, keeping control of all the false fields in the world. So they're trying to destroy her supply. Uh, they they wind up going to like this this uh, this fortress in the snow or something like that. Oh, because she wants to drill in uh, Alaska. There's so many parallels with the real world. I guess they just. I feel like overall they just didn't. The writers just didn't care anymore they're like what do we have to lose because the season is this is like the first season back after being canceled so they, i guess they feel like what do we have to lose we're just not we're not going to try and hide um a message or or a conversation starter we're not going to try and cleverly put it in an episode we're just going to outwardly say it which they're doing um it makes for a more wacky episode i feel like which is good so Oh yeah, the, the funny a funny thing from, from this episode is um so the defenses that are guarding this fortress are called killbots and apparently they can't hear that well. So uh uh mom's three sons are over there they're telling the, the killbots, "Hey, keep firing in that way." And they're like, "What?" They, as they turn around, they can't stop firing. They're like, "What did you say?" So they they're shooting the guys up, which I thought was funny. And then they run into them again. Leela and the crew, they run into some more killbots inside the facility. And they're like, they, they're saying something to one another. It's like, what'd you say? And they turn to each other and they basically destroy each other. I know I butchered it, but it was pretty funny to me. Um, overall, I like these two episodes. And I'm going to have to finish the rest of them to see where the end of the story comes to. But uh, basically, it's just, it's a, both episodes so far have been a critique of um, America's dependence on fossil fuels which should I speak on they actually they, they actually did a little research too because they go in in depth they, I mean they put some effort into telling you the origin of uh, how fossil fuel uh, like gasoline and things of that nature were even used they were at when gasoline was first invented it was considered to be garbage and they were just throwing it away but then they found a way to make it uh viable uh at least rockefeller did okay i know too much about this i know i know a little too little, little too much about about this particular uh subject but i'm interested to see where it's going